Morning, how are we doing? I'm amazing, thanks for asking. I thought I'd, um, my voice broke a little bit there. It was very emotional. Um, <laughs> so I was about to cry. No, I, I thought I'd do a slightly different video. We know I'm starting or trying to do these vlog things and they're probably gonna be really infrequent. You know, um, I don't know how long. It could be like, you know, once every month or whatever, or I guess it depends. I'm not gonna put a time kind of scale on it because knowing me, I'll completely forget about it. And six months will go by and then I'll do the second one. It'll be like that Wednesday week thing that I did like two years ago. And I think I've done 12 or 13, 14 since in two years, which is rubbish. So I'm not going to say that I'm going to do vlogs every week or every month or whatever. It's just as and when. It just so happens that I've done three now, if you include this one, in the space of around about seven or eight days or maybe 10 days, something like that. So and this is the first one which doesn't have gameplay on. So you might like this. You might think this is absolutely bloody rubbish. What am I doing watching this? And I couldn't really blame you if you do think that, but we'll give it a shot. Now, we've just come back <laughs> shopping from the fabulously named, as I spat on the screen there, uh, Winko Foods, and <laughs> I'm now going to wipe it off. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Winko Foods. It's funny, when I first saw that name, it just reminded me, I guess predictably, of Wanker. Wanker Foods. Wanker, Winko. It doesn't sound the same, but it kind of does. I don't know, that's what I thought. Because I'd never seen that, that brand before. That, uh, that franchise, that name, if you like, Winko, it's not in the UK. Or maybe it has been the last sort of four or five years since I've been here. But I doubt it. I think it's just an American thing. But anyway, I thought I'd talk a little bit about just random stuff and also show you everything that we've bought um, when we went shopping. So milk, obviously. Quite clearly, we've got the 2% uh, reduced fat. My body's a temple and all that. <laughs> I'm getting there. I've eaten no junk. Hang on, no, that's a lie. I ate, right, and you're going to think, hang on a minute, you've fallen off the wagon here. I ate eight tonics caramel bars in about an hour um, <laughs> with about two cups of tea. And that was only because my mum sent them over. I had to eat them, but I didn't actually buy them myself. So I'm doing pretty well. Next one up is cranberry, langers, langers, whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going to have to get the, uh, the bags from over here, so bear with me. In fact, I don't even know if you can still hear me. Maybe you can. But it made me laugh this morning, actually. I've got to be honest. I don't think you really want to see cat litter, do you? Well, you've seen it now. And here's another one. It made me laugh this morning because um, I woke up, I don't know if you can see it, with a spot. Where is it? Now, there it is. Right above my lip. And I squeezed it, as you do, you know, when you're 30-something. Very childish. And, um, and it's just made it 10 times worse. It's like, it's really like prevalent now. If I'd have just left it, ridiculous. So that annoyed me. Special K, with the red berries. Come on, gotta do that. And uh, yeah, so you shouldn't really do that. French stick or French bread, whatever. And then a load of soup. Minestrone. Mexican style chicken tortilla. Lovely. Oh, nearly dropping it here. Vegetable. A vegetable medley. Sounds like a band, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> like performing a, um, some songs. Vegetable medley. Brilliant. There's another one. Tomato garden. This is, I don't even know why I'm doing this video. I've just It's quickly realised or dawned upon me this is pointless. Chicken noodle. <laughs> But, you know, as Magnus Magnusson would have said, I've started, so I'm going to finish. And some bagels. And they smell bloody nice, to be fair. So I'm just going to stick them all out on the countertop. I'm not going to put them away. Or I might do, we'll see. And uh, some car keys. I didn't buy a car today. And some sunglasses with sparkly things. They're not mine. Give me a break. But I did wear them, so there we are. And then some bread. There we are. What's it say? Fine grain? Nine grain. Now, something funny happened yesterday. It did annoy me. I'll tell you about it in a second as I grab the next bag. I might not necessarily kind of uh, talk about everything that I've bought. I might just kind of hold it up to the camera. But it's very hard not to kind of hold it up without actually saying what it is, even though you can see what it is. Kiwis. And two, two lots of sausages. But they're both the same. Turkey sausage. How bizarre. Yeah, this annoyed me, actually. I'll stop doing the shopping. So yesterday the telephone rang, uh, which is just there. I know you can't see it. Telephone rang. 
And um, usually I think, if I'm in the house, like, oh, Bobby, I can't be bothered getting that. And I'll just let it go to the answer machine because that's what answer machines are for. But I thought, you know what? I'm standing pretty much here where I was. I was making a cup of tea or there's a kettle there. And um, so yeah, the phone rang, picked it up and um, straight away, and this always annoys me. I don't know if this annoys anyone else, probably just me. I picked it up and this voice at the other end said, uh, who's that? What do you mean, who's that? You're calling, you should know who you've just called. So I said, it depends who you want. No, I, I said, sorry, no, it depends who you are. <laughs> Which, you know, got it off to a bit of a rude start, I guess. But I thought it was, uh, I thought it was their fault for doing that. It was, it was a woman that um, my wife works with, at, at, like her second job. So anyway, she quickly realised it was me. But that's the other thing. Who else is it going to be? What grown man lives here other than me? Ridiculous. So that annoyed me on two fronts there. One, she's calling and asking who it is. And secondly, she should know who it is, which I guess is kind of the same sort of reason. Bananas. Bloody nice. Who doesn't like a banana? And that's not a, not a euphemism, obviously. Tomatoes. So anyway, she said, uh, you know, is my wife in? I said, no, she's at um, a second job, her other job. She'll be back at so-and-so time. Celery. <laughs> and um, and Deb, as she's called, she went, um, oh, okay, well, just, just let her know that tomorrow, as in today, uh, we're, we're meeting up early because we're going to have some lunch, like, you know, the, the members of the staff, and um, coming in a bit early, so t tell her to come in a bit early. I said, all right, fine. I said, I will tell her, but I said, just in case you can't, because I don't know her working pattern from her other job tomorrow morning, just in case she can, um, should I get her to give you a call? And Deb said, I know you don't care, <laughs> but Deb said, um, well, no, I probably won't be in, so just, just pass the message on. And I said, all right, that's fair enough. I said, but just in case, I said, I don't want to be responsible for her not turning up and you expect her. I said, give me your cell number, right? A mobile. They don't call it mobile, they had cell, cell phones, right? So I said, so um, give me your cell number. Trouble Hearts Lettuce. Who doesn't like lettuce? I'll tell you what I'd really like, I know I'm going off on a tangent here, lettuce with salad cream, but they don't sell salad cream here. I'm gonna have to import some. Oh, well, they can do, I have seen it, that's a lie, but it's like kind of specialist stores. You're not really gonna find it in this town that I'm living in, not really. So anyway, I said to Deb, um, she didn't want me to, to uh, get my wife to call her on her landline, so I said to Deb, give me your cell number and I will get my wife to give you a call if she needs to, if she needs to, if she can't make it on time or whatever. And then this Deb, she flustered a little bit and she was like, Oh, well, uh, uh, and I could tell immediately, because I'm pretty clever, pretty clued up at, you know, cottoning onto things like that. And I knew she didn't want to give her cell, to, uh, cell number to me. I knew that. I could just tell. Fine, fair enough. But um, I thought, what's the point? You know, it's a bit silly. But anyway, so she flustered a little bit. Uh, uh, and then she came back about five seconds later, like, pretended to go off and get a pen or something. And then she went, um, this, this made me laugh. She went, oh, OK, I'm ready. And I'm like, ready for what? And she went, for her cell. And I went, no, quite assertively, not rudely. I went, no, what's yours? I said, what's yours? You give me yours. And again, she's all flustered and floundered. Oh, oh well, I, I, I don't really, I, I only use it for emergencies, so I, I, I never really have it on. Well, that doesn't make any sense either. If you only use it for emergencies, surely it's always on. Because if it is an emergency and you've got it knocked off, how's anyone going to contact you? And I much preferred it, right, if she'd have said, if she'd have said, do you know what? Um, I like how I'm kind of holding the phone as well. Uh, do you know what, Alex, I, uh, I don't really give my, my cell phone out to people, it's just for, for family. And I'd have turned around and I would have went, fair enough. But to come up with this bollocks, this stupid little story, and then try before that, like I say, to switch it around assertively on her part. And so, when I asked her for her cell and she goes, go on then, what, what's, you know, my wife's? I'm like, no, 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 I asked what yours was. Nice try. <laughs> so she probably thinks I'm really rude. What the hell is this? Some kind of like um, asparagus or something? I don't know. Broccoli. I wanted to get this, and the wife said she, uh, she said not to, but I did anyway, because I wanted it. And I really got this kind of, I don't know, I like the idea of having some mashed potatoes with some broccoli with some cheese sauce, hot cheese sauce over the top. You know, sometimes you're just in that mood for just eating something, whatever it is, and I just really want to eat that. And these things, um, zucchinis, I'm sure they're called something else in, uh, in the UK. Maybe not. Zucchinis. And then, of course, some carrots. But yeah, so that kind of really annoyed me yesterday. And I passed the message on. Then today, obviously, we dropped her off um, early, as expected. But 
very assertive of her, but she was messing with me. Not the thing to do. But I'll get the other, uh, the other bag. In fact, there's quite a few more bags. More bread. So that's about it, really, when it comes to them two stories. Went around uh, the Winco today, obviously, Winco shopping, got some tuna. It's pretty busy, which surprised me because, you know, it's... What time is it now? It is... Uh, it's only half twelve in the afternoon, and we're eight hours behind the UK. So I don't know whether I'm going to upload this today, as in Thursday or Friday or whenever. More soup. It's like a soup fest. More chicken tortilla. That is really nice, honestly, Mexican style. And the whole Mexican thing, like the Spanish language, is pretty big in, um, not necessarily America, but big in California, because obviously if you look at the map, uh, border Mexico and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of tomato basil or basil, as they would trick you into thinking it's called over here. Um, but yeah, the whole Spanish language thing is a big deal. And in fact, there's a lot of signs around, like street signs, that are all in a... Uh, that kind of in Spanish. They're in English as well, obviously. But sometimes you look at it and you think, this is just ridiculous. I, know. I mean, I know it's close to the border and all the rest of it, but... But here's a little fact for you. Did you know that officially, officially, English isn't the national language of America? Did you know that? I mean, it clearly is unofficially, but just officially it's not the, uh, the national language. I don't think there is one. And I guess because America is kind of a melting pot, isn't it, of, uh, of all nations... Florida natural, Florida, or in California. Why, why aren't we sending California? Let's support California. What's all this Florida malarkey about? <laughs> Minute Maid. I have been to Florida. Disneyland, obviously. Or is it Disney World? I don't know. I've been to both of them. I've been to the one in Florida and obviously been to the one in... I say obviously, like, it's not obvious at all. Uh, the one in California as well. But the one that... <laughs> when I went to Florida, I was... Um, about eight, for 86. Christmas of 86. I'll, I'll talk a bit about that in a minute, actually. A bit random, but uh, there's one more bag after this. Oh no, sorry, there's another bag on the floor. I've missed that one. But yeah, 98, I tell you what, honestly, in the 80s, back in the day, I was the ninja, the master at winning competitions. All sorts of stuff. Crosswords, um, bloody uh, anagrams. Uh, drawings, they were always going up in like kind of local civic halls and all that kind of stuff. My name was always in the newspaper. I was always winning competitions, prizes, pencil cases, pens, calculators, you know, stuff for school, a big camera. I remember the newspaper came into school one day and I, had, you know, and they wanted the picture of me and my classmates and I had this huge bloody camera which was nearly bigger than me, like around my neck and like obviously my two front teeth are missing because, you know, that's when my teeth are coming through. As a kid, must have been about six or seven, whatever age you are when that happens. And um, so, yeah, I used to win a load of competitions and I won a trip to America, to Florida. And that's what it was, the whole Disney thing. It was part of Disney's, let me see, what would it have been? It was 86, Christmas 86. I think it was Disneyland or Disney World, whichever one it is. I think land, isn't it, in Florida? I can't remember. But it was, um, it was the 15th year that it had all been there, the park. And so they were celebrating in style. Or was it 20 years? 25, maybe? I think it was 15. Did I show that? Blue bonnet. Butter. What was it margarine? Butter, I think. And yeah, it was unbelievable. Now, I remember, oh, honestly, I always say this, but I remember like it was yesterday. My mum picked me up from the bus stop. Some grapes. My mum picked me up from the bus stop, and she went, you're not going to believe this. Got some really good news. And I went, well, what? Got some salami. That wasn't the news. She didn't say, got some good news. What? Got some salami. Thanks, man. <laughs> now she said, um, we've won a trip. Or well, you won a trip, the competition. And I think it was drawing a picture or something. And it was to do with Heinz, you know, the, um, funnily enough, speaking of salad cream, Heinz salad cream, or Heinz baked beans, whatever. And mozzarella cheese, or lita cheese, or is that Jack, uh, Jack cheese, chipotle, 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 whatever. But it's kind of a little bit, um, how do you describe it? A little bit sweet, maybe, a little bit um, zingy. I like it, especially with the French stick. So, yeah, she went, uh, we, you've, you've won a trip, or we've won a trip, because of the drawing that you did to Heinz. And I was like, oh, what? where is it? Where? What? And she went to America. And again, I remember it like it was yesterday. We were walking down this big, long hill, picked me up from the school bus stop, and I said, um, I said I'm not going. 
And she went, what do you mean? I said, I'm not getting on a plane. I'm not getting on a plane. <laughs> At the age of like seven or eight or nine, whatever I was. This irrational fear, even back then. And I don't know where or how it started. I guess it's just the fact that I've never liked the idea of, I don't know, being in someone else's control and you can't do anything. If that thing's coming down, see you later. You know, whereas if you're on like a ship, if it's going to sink, that's fine. You're going to be all right. Just get in a rescue boat. But if you're in a plane, you're buggered. <laughs> and even back then, oh, I might as well show these flavours. Because there's some weird ones as well. Orange cream. Really looking forward to tasting that. There's some weird ones coming up, honestly. Red raspberry. And, uh, yeah, I, and I didn't want to go, but of course I had to. And I had the same fit as well in like the early 90s, very early 90s, when we went to Tenerife. I went, I'm not getting on a plane. Of course I had to. I was like 14. I had to get on it. What was I going to do? Stay at home at 14, like Macaulay Culkin or something. And of course, you know, when, when you're up in the air, that was fine. Setting off, didn't really have a problem with that. There's a, that, I don't know, that just, the bit from taking off up until you're actually in the air, I was a little bit nervous. But um, when I'm in the air, absolutely fine. Landing, brilliant. Now, it's weird because some people don't like the landing. I love it because I guess the closer you get, you know, obviously the closer you are to safety. So I've always liked that. It's a taking off, which I've never really liked. But, um, but yeah, planes, I hate them. I've been on them before, obviously, as I've just explained, but I just don't like them. Even though, obviously, I know it's always going to be fine, clearly for me and for you and all our friends and families and all the rest of it, but it's just that kind of fear, I guess. Raspberry cheesecake. But, yeah, I absolutely loved um, Florida when I went there, Disneyland. Loads of uh, good memories. They had this little kind of toy thing at the time. It was called Figment, and it was like a purple dinosaur. I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about. And I had that for years after. I mean, you know, I didn't, like, still have it in my 20s or anything like that. That would be a bit weird. But, yeah, how long have we been talking for? Nearly a while, quite a while. Oh, this is one of the weird ones. Boston cream pie. How bizarre. And then a, another orange cream one. But, and also another abiding memory that I've got, apart from things like the Epcot Centre and thinking that looks like a bloody giant golf ball. Which, of course, that's what it does look like. Lemon cream pie, that's going to be a good one. And uh, there's another one, lemon. But yeah, another abiding memory was I went to this store in Disneyland, in, in like the, you know, the theme park. And it was, uh, you know, the north and south, the kind of the, um, the, the civil war that they had over here, obviously, you know, a long, long time ago. And there was the north and south, the confederates and the other people. And, uh, <laughs> and there was this gun and um, a toy, obviously not real. I say obviously, it's America, you know, guns, you know, everyone loves them around here, don't they? But it was a toy gun, and I thought, I'm going to have that. Because I was that age, you know, you're playing with guns and cowboys and Indians and all that kind of stuff. Strawberry cheesecake, that's going to be classic. Another Boston one there. And I bought this gun, and I bought, um, I think it was a Confederate. Which ones are Confederates? Were they the ones in, like, the blue? Or was it, it was the ones in the grey? That was more of, like, the, the south, wasn't it, I think? I can't remember. But anyway, I bought the, the cap and the gun, and then on the way back... I tried to take the gun, obviously, through the airport, and they actually thought it was a real one, and they initially wouldn't let me have it, but then they kind of realised it was just fake. But I was walking through the airport with this big gun kind of, like, on my shoulder. It was fake, obviously, like I say, but um, I can imagine it would have maybe caused a few people to panic, but I was a kid, what did they expect? Got some kind of hair. God, that smells quite nice, actually. Just in case you ever see this uh, brand around, I highly doubt you will. Suave. Which is what I am. See what I did there? <laughs> One more, uh, two more bags. But yeah, gun laws. I guess that's what I could briefly talk about here. Oh, you don't really want to see all this, but I will anyway. Um, shower gel and shampoo. You might be interested in the brands and stuff. Or maybe, as per usual, you know, you're not watching, you're just listening. I can't complain, I do it as well. But yeah, gun laws over here, absolutely ridiculous. Um, but then again, you know, to be fair, obviously, you know, I come from the UK, um, like you didn't know that. And, you know, if you grow up with a certain view of something because of how things are where you come from, then I think you're always going to favour that. You're always going to think that's right. Sorry, my screen save kicked in there. So it's all very well me kind of saying, oh, guns are terrible. They shouldn't be allowed. And I do believe that even when I try to look at it, you know, objectively, I do still think they're wrong. 
But it is very easy to comment on something when you're not used to the other side of the coin. And over here, obviously, people grow up with that right. You know, it's part of the Constitution. Um, I think it's, you know, the right to bear arms. And if somebody wants a gun, they, they can have one. I still believe they've got to get a licence for it. You know, I don't think you can just buy one randomly. Or maybe you can. I'm not really, you know, completely au fait with all the rules, but... Antibacterial kitchen cleaner? For the wife, obviously. Do you think I am? Joking. I do a bit of cleaning as well. So, um, yeah, gun laws, I, I hate them. There's no way we're ever going to have a gun for as long as I'm living here. Or as long as we're living here. And, um, oh, toothpaste, of course. But some people do, you know? And But I just, I feel, I don't know, I think my problem with it is if you've got two... All right, in the UK, right, if you've got two neighbours who are having a bit of a, you know, an argument, shall we say, a disagreement, then two things can happen. One, they just go back in their houses and they slag each other off to their family or they chunter away to themselves. And that's pretty much the end of it. You know, you may have a bit of a, you may avoid them in the future, but that's as far as it goes. Or, to the extreme, it's a bit of a, a you know, fist fight. You punch in the face, that'll teach you, and then it's kind of done. And I just believe that by having guns, it's too easy, it's too easy for someone in the heat of the moment, you know, when we're all angry and we all say things in the heat of the moment that we regret, we've all done that, we'll all continue to do that, um, because that's what happens when, you know, your emotions are running high. But I think over here, it's too easy just to reach for the gun and then fire it, and then it's too late to go back once you've done that. And I believe that by getting rid of the guns, it, obviously you're not going to eradicate crime, gun crime, you're not going to eradicate it, obviously, if somebody wants to do it, then they'll find a way, clearly, but you're making it easier for them by having the laws in place, and they're all talking about, oh, well, let's get rid of, you know, like, things like submachine guns, and they're missing the point, you know, just get rid of guns completely, and, and I hate seeing that, all these people coming on, um, saying, oh, yeah, it's, it's the, the heavy ammunition capacity um, weapons, they're causing the problems, uh, handguns are fine. Well, no, they're not, because people can still shoot people with ha a handgun as well. So eradicate all weapons, and the crime will just plummet. But I think the big problem... Cheerios. The big problem is America is so big. It's such a big country, honestly. I mean, just to put it into perspective, California, from top to bottom, is bigger than the United Kingdom. It's, it's just ridiculous. So that's why I've always thought, I mean, kind of speaking of the Civil War, and I'm not suggesting there should be another one, obviously, I'm not suggesting that. But I've always thought America is possibly, possibly, too big a country to be governed by one government. And maybe dividing the country um, would be a better way of managing it. Because you see different rules in different states. You know, what you can do in one state, you can't do in the other. You know, you've got to be one age to do this, and another age in another state to do the other. And it's just... It just creates kind of hypocrisy and double standards. And um, it's just a bit ludicrous. Done all the shopping, can you believe that? Can't believe you watch this. Uh, if you have, that is. So yeah, that's my kind of stance on that. I'm going to wrap this video up now. I'm going to put these away. And uh, I did, did I even mention games? I don't think I did. How bizarre. There'll be furious people, furious subscribers. You didn't mention bloody games, you bastard. I'm unsubscribing. See you later then. Didn't want you anyway. <laughs> But um, no, yeah, I'll be back with more videos, I guess, as and when. They may be like this, you know, a bit random, kind of in different rooms, putting things away. I'm sure you'll be very quick to let me know if you didn't like it. Um, but maybe you did. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.